In this video, I'm going to walk you through my entire plant collection and then show you sort of like as I inspect it, as I clean it, and as I water it. Hey everyone, Paolo from Learning here, and some of you have been asking to see my plant collection, to get an introduction to my all my plants. So I figured making this video will be fun for everyone because I get to talk about all my plants, how I like them, how I don't like them, and then you get to meet all of them. So as a background, it's been like five days um, since I saw my plants. They're supposed to be able to survive up until like a week and a half without me having to water anything. So I'm here just kind of testing out and seeing if it actually worked out. All right, so we're going to start with my IKEA cabinet. This is basically where I keep all of my tissue cultures. This is where I transition them from tissue or the flask and then into hopefully a bigger size. So my top shelf is literally all the new plants that I have that we can start sort of looking at. For me to do my checkup on my plants, I need a few things. So I have some insecticidal soap because before I left, I noticed that my alocasia purpley had some spider mites. So I sprayed it down and I'm going to recheck it and then kind of check all the plants around it to make sure I catch any potential infestation that's starting. And then I also carry around a 20% hydrogen peroxide solution. Um, I love hydrogen peroxide and plants and I just use it for everything. Um, so I, this is what I use to spray on it to give it a little extra help when it's unfurling a leaf or it just needs a little more sort of humidity on a specific spot. And I just think the hydrogen peroxide does a really good job at killing potentially anything else that might be there. So up first, and because it's my favorite, is the Philodendron Pink Princess. Oh, you can see how pretty that is. So I got super lucky with this plant. I got it from Plant Fairy. And while I transitioned it to Leca just like a week and a half ago, so there's no roots or anything, um, it seems to be doing pretty well, which I'm pretty impressed with. I'm, of course, going to be playing a B-roll of a close-up. But basically, this plant decided to give me like a half moon. And I was super excited because I have not seen a lot of high variegation on like some of the philodendron orange princesses. And then the next one, it gave me a full uh, moon. And I was stressing out because, you know, that means that it's going to kill itself. Um, but the next leaf was only sectoral and it still had green on it. And this one actually looks like it's going to be really high in variegation as well. So I think this plant is just going to keep me like on the edge of my seat. But I think it's so beautiful. Orange is my favorite color. And this plant is it's what I imagine it would be. And then like times five. Like it has just been such a good experience. I paid $60 for it. And yeah, 10 out of 10. I love this plant. Up next, what is this? And I checked it and the water was fine, so I don't think it needs any water or anything. This is a Syngonium confetti um, that I actually got as a poo. What that means is that the media is contaminated in the tissue culture and has like mold growing on it. So they sell it to you super cheap because it's not guaranteed that it's going to survive. So I really enjoy buying those because they're almost like a challenge. And also it gives you a really good deal on plants that sometimes would be really expensive and I could not afford. This one is not that expensive. It was just like a quick pack. I want to say I paid like three, four dollars for it. Um, one of them did not make it. It had five plants in it. So this one I think is going to be fine. This one a little bit. This one is a baby. Um, they have not really grown a lot of roots. There's a little bit, tiny little baby. I don't know if you can see it right. So it seems to be a little dry and I'm going to water it. This is the solution that I make like by the five gallon. It's a um, just water that has some pH down, so it's slightly acidic. And then I add nutrients to it, so it has like, you know, all of the nutrients the plant need. And then I use the same one for all of them. I'm going to give it a little extra because it was kind of dry and I don't love that. I know syngomiums, syngoniums like to um, be a little damp, so I think that's going to be enough. Up next is also the five um, Red Andersons. It was also a tissue culture poo pack that I am transitioning. So far, it seems like all of them are doing really well. I'm not seeing a lot of variegation. I think this big one does have some, um, but some of the other ones are looking a little green. Not really too familiar with Red Anderson. I think it's a mixture between White Knight and White Princess or something like that. Um, Water-wise, I think it's fine. Actually, I don't think it needs anything. Um, it's still touching. It is still in a humidity dome. I took out the tape. So it has some humidity. Um, yeah, this one is doing well. 
are you familiar with Red Anderson? Do you have one? Do you like it? I don't know. It was just cheap. I think I paid like seven, six, seven dollars for the poo pack, and I was like, all right, that's that's good enough. It's worth the risk. Um, let's see what's next. Oh yeah, this is um a big boy. This is my philodendron uh, Jose Buono. I <laughs> I feel bamboozled slightly by this plant. Um, I think it might need a little bit of water. It's kind of dry. You can check. Just it does have a wick, so that helps. Um, this plant I really wanted to have high variegation because I thought the white when it comes out is also pretty. Um, I'm putting a close up of how fun this plant is, and then I learned that the variegation is not stable in the sense of like it doesn't stay white; it becomes like a lime green. Um, and I felt slightly cheated. Here you can see like my half moons just becoming like basically green ish. Um, yeah, and I was like kind of mad. And then look at this one. This one used to be fully white and now it's like greenish. Um, so I'm assuming this one that is fully white is also going to turn pretty greenish in a little bit. So I'm a little disappointed with this plant. Um, I know it's going to get massive, but I was hoping to live like the really white fantasy. I did not realize that it was the lime green fantasy. And um, it's all right. But what it does need is it needs to be moved into Leca. So I will be repotting this plant into Leca very soon. I just did not get around it um, anytime soon. Up next is also another poo tissue culture that I have. And this one is a Philodendron Gigantum variegated. Um, it's melting a little bit, if you see, putting, of course, a close-up. Um, it has two new leaves, which I'm really happy about. That means that it's at least putting some roots. Some of the leaves that it had completely melted. You can see it right there. Um, but this one still has a little bit of green, so it's not fully variegated, and I think it's going to survive. I'm not sure if this is a blizzard, right? Like, they call it that. I just bought it as a variegated gigantium. Um, I'm not really sure if there's a difference or something like that. I think this one needs a little bit of water. I just like for the water level for these ones that are still really small to stay around right here, which is right at the level of the cup. So any humidity that comes up is just going to be sort of like recirculated. Then here I have all my tissue culture plants that I purchased, but I'm sort of acclimating or I just have not gotten around like taking them and deflasking them. Actually, one of them, I wanted to make a video about deflasking those poo tissue cultures or contaminated tissue cultures. So I'm waiting on that mold to expand. But I'm going to walk you through it, um, a little bit of what I have here. This is a oh, wait, reflection. Oh, there. There we go. It's huge. I really need to deflask this plant. This is a Homalumina rubescens pink splash. Um, I did not actually buy this plant. I bought a bingo in one of those plant story give um, like selling, um, and I ended up just getting that. I was hoping I would get like a variegated monstera, like they had like Marylands and stuff like that, but I ended up getting that. It was like fifty bucks. I think it's okay. Not the end of, of the world. Yeah, I'm not gonna even try. It. You're just gonna see it right there. Um, this is a philodendron whippleway. And it's supposed to have the variegation that I like. It's supposed to have that really high variegation that turns pinkish when it's sun stressed. This is the plant that is contaminated with some mold. So I'm waiting for it to grow a little bit more um, to sort of show you guys how, what I do when it gets contaminated. The other one that I have is one that I'm really excited. Actually, has no label. It's a philodendron caramel marble. If you saw my wish list for 2024, you know I want this plant. So I was able to get a little tissue culture, but um, I'm a little worried that two of those leaves do not have irrigation um, and the, the one that just came out is like unfurling. So potentially it's going to just turn into like, what is it, like a Pluto or something like that? Um, I don't know. It, it will definitely get cut if, even if it's a baby. I'm just going to like chop it and hope that it just activates a bunch of growth points with like tissue culture magic because I am not having a reverted caramel marble after I paid, I think, $95 for this. And then the last tissue culture that I have right now, still in my neck flask, is the philodendron, um, what is this? Oh, Spiritus Santi. I bought this by accident, kind of. I was watching a live with Plant Fairy, 
and they were having this new feature a few months back in which you could like swipe to bid. But in this case, it was just like press to bid. And I was literally just like scrolling to the comments and I pressed on the button and this thing just bid automatically for me. And I was like, no, no, no. And then I won it and I was like, well, I kind of want it, so whatever. I ended up paying like 40 bucks for it. So it was not bad at all. And it has two plants, so just look at that. It has two plants there. So I'm waiting for the second one to get a little bit bigger. So I'm going to try to separate them when I deflask it. All right, now we're in the second tier of the cabinet. Uh, up first, this is one of my like my favorite things ever is the Philodendron um, Pink Princess. Specifically, this one is my favorite thing ever. It has like a half moon here. You can see how pretty that is. It has this awesome marbling that I think it's so cute. I'm just going to put the video so you guys see how beautiful it is. Um, this plant sucks. It doesn't matter how much humidity you give it. It always has the new leaf get stuck in like the caterpillar and then like the petiole is too small. This plant is a mess. So what I do is I just spray it with that mixture of hydrogen peroxide and water, 20%. And then usually that helps a lot of this to sort of like pop up. But if it doesn't, I bring a little bit of help because I am a helper. I help my plants unfurl. Have I broken some leaves? Yes. Does that make me stop doing it? No, I just like it. It's fun. So you're going to watch me. If you're triggered by that, I'm sorry. So what I do is I will have like a little brush, like just to paint, and then I'll spray on it. And then I grab my little brush and then I'm very delicately sort of just brushing the sides of this. What I'm trying to do is get the bristles of the of the brush to go in to that area. Not wanting to push, not trying to do anything that I'm gonna force it out and just spraying it. And then sitting right here, I'm just very carefully brushing brushing don't force anything out get a brush it brush it we put a little bit more of the hydrogen peroxide and then we just very gently we're gonna brush 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 Perfect. So we got it out. What I did was basically I just pushed it up with that spray and just sort of like very carefully brushing it. And now it's up and outside of this, this area that was kind of like keeping it in. Um, so yeah, now this plant can just completely unfurl and this leaf has the ability to not like half die in there. I'm going to give it one last spray of hydrogen peroxide and yeah, we'll just keep an eye on it. Up next is my philodendron ring of fire. This was one of those, um, sometimes when you buy some stores, they have like a ugly duckling or like a surprise pack. So this was basically a surprise pack for just some random plants. And I ended up getting this one. Um, I think I paid like 15 bucks or something like that. So I was pretty pleased with what I got because I thought the variegation was really nice. It has grown a bunch of roots already in here. Super happy. It's starting to get the sort of like ribbing in it. And of course, it's sun stress, so it's red. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately for this plant, I actually ended up finding a big ring of fire that had really good variegation for like 10 bucks. I'll show it to you guys l later when we get to that room. Um, but yeah, this plant was just still pretty, still kicking. I like it. I think it's going to get too big, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. But so far, it's been pretty good. Up next is a plant that is screaming to be repotted. <laughs> this is my Monstera Deliciosa. Um, you can see how chunky some of the roots are. Like, look how chunky that is. This is my Monstera Deliciosa. Not my favorite. This is like the um, forgotten child. It's okay. It just doesn't, I just don't have as many high hopes for this plant as I do for the other one. But this plant just is sucking up all of the water. Look how little was in it. Like, look how little was left. I didn't even see it. So there's almost nothing left in there. Let's see. see, there was not even enough for it to, like, come out at the bottom. So this plant is just telling me that it's taking up too much water and it really needs a repot. So I'm going to put some water in it. 
and then I'm gonna put it aside and I'm hoping that maybe today or tomorrow I'll get to repot it into some Leka. So I just like to let it go. And yeah, I mean, I like it, I love it, of course, but I'll show you my favorite. So this is my favorite Monster Deliciosa. It has this really cool pattern that it has been putting out from the beginning. It's like half money, and then it goes this, and then this one also had like a three-fourths, and then this is the last leaf. Um, and then right now you can see the new one that is coming up. This also already has like a big sectoral variegation. So yeah, so this is the, the one that I have the highest hopes for, and I think it's gonna get really, really cool when it gets big. Because look how much white is in one side of the um, stem, and then the other one is green. Isn't that cool? So this plant, I think, is going to have a really fun variegation, and I'm really looking forward to it. Mm, Water-wise, I think it's also a little dry. It's a little crunchy. Interesting. So both of these plants are taking up a lot more water than they're supposed to. This is supposed to last them, like, except a week. And the fact that it's not and it's going down really slow is also telling me that this plant needs to be um, repotted into something bigger. You know, I'm really excited about this one. I'm a little worried about this one. This is a, I bought it as a poop for $50. I'm just prefacing by saying that. This is a variegated um, philodendron joepii, joepii, joepii. So it does have a really nice variegation. I'm gonna see if I can try to zoom in. But when I got it, it did not have a lot of good roots. So I'm putting a video of that, but I was a little worried that it was just gonna die. It did not look like it had a lot of root system. It just had those leaves. Um, so I have really high hopes for this. That would be like such a fun unicorn holy grail if I'm able to like size it up to like get the leaves. And then it also has variegation for 50 bucks. That'd be awesome. Um, but it's going really, really slow. It's barely pushing out that tiny leaf. And here you can see like I still have it sealed. So it's still in a really high humidity and while the water is a little bit lower than where I left it, I don't feel comfortable making this media too moist or too wet because I think it could rot because it doesn't have a lot of roots. So I just want the water to be evaporating here and keeping this kind of humid and just steamy and then everything just here getting stuck. So that's what I want. This one here is also one of those plants that I'm like, I should have just purchased acclimated, but I thought I would try to do the actual acclimation myself. This is a variegated bambino, alocasia, and oof, that shit melted. It melted instantly. I mean, I'll post a picture of the video, what it looked like when I got it in the bag, and then it, it melted because it has no green. It has no green. All the green you see there is literally algae. Um, it was just rotted. It had different entries. It is just such an unhappy camper. I'm surprised that this one here is even surviving. It just has a little bit of green on one side and a little bit of green on the other. Um, this one is definitely just getting sprayed with that hydrogen peroxide because it's rotting. I know it is, and there's nothing I can do. It's, it has a tiny little bit of sphagnum, but this is mostly perlite. Let me see if I can show you. Like, this is mostly just perlite. Um, hmm. Yeah, look at that. Even the, the actual leaf is bubbling with the hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this plant's going to make it. So, no bambino. Up next is a plant that I guess I was confused on what it was. I thought it was like a variegated Prince of Orange. It's the or, um, Philodendron Orange Marmalade. And then I bought it twice. I'll show you the other one. And I, it turns out that it's not. It's just some other different hybrid or cultivar. And I was like, damn bamboozled by mar bad marketing and me not doing enough research. Um, this one is really pretty. I love orange, like I said before. And so far it has two plants. Um, we'll see what it turns into. I really don't have, like, I have not seen a lot of them, like from other people on YouTube. So we'll see what this orange marmalade turns into. Here I have some extra plants that ended up just sort of popping up because the main one broke. This ended up being a philodendron splendid which I think is a mixture of um, melanocrysum and verrucosum or something like that. Um, yeah, it's two plants. I'm actually trading these. I'm going to take them to a plant swap. You can see that they're basically already rooting. They are adapting into LECA right here. So I'm going to split them, actually, and to split them into two different containers. I just haven't because this one was unfurling a leaf. 
You need to help. You need help with the leaf, and I'm here to help it. Yes, baby. Yes. All right, nothing is going to work out really well. And I know what you're saying. Oh, no, the water's going to rot the leaf, and the water's going to sit there. But honestly, I've been doing this, like, <laughs> since I started doing plants. And I've never had that issue happen. Um, it ha it's sitting right next to a fan. So honestly, I really don't think um, it's that big of a deal. But I do enjoy opening up that leaf. You saw that? That's fun. So yeah, you might be able to get this if you go to the plant swap in Southwest Ranches in March. I think it is when it is. I'll post a little poster. All right, so this is the lower part of my cabinet where I keep my nepenthes, but we're going to start with still with the philodendrons before we get into them. Um, up here is, this is one of the reasons why I do not purchase some Etsy. I got, I think, bamboozled. Um, yeah, I ended up getting some of my money back because I ordered a bunch of plants and I got not what I ordered. So this is, um, I bought it as a philodendron red king. Um, and I don't know what it's turned into, but I don't think it's a red king. Because the other pictures I've seen do not look like that. Funny enough, it looks a lot like the orange marmalade. And then, then, ugh, ended up buying this plant allegedly as an orange marmalade. And I also don't know what it is. Because this one doesn't look too much like the other orange marmalade. So honestly, I feel like they all might be that. They all might be like a mystery. These two might be like a mystery hybrid or something. Not sure. But... I'm hoping that they just get big and pretty and that they're not climbers. <laughs> so if this ends up being like a self-heading somehow, I'm going to be very happy with it. So I'm showing a picture. Ugh. It's a little bit of help. Oh, yeah. And that same seller basically decided um, themselves. Not on me. I did not ask for that. They decided to send me this, which I think it's... I honestly have no idea what the name of this is. Um, three types. The white one completely took over the cup over the other two. I guess I should move them. I honestly have not done any research on these plants. Like, I have no clue what they are, how big they get. So, I guess I'll do some research. Um, they're okay. They grew roots very quickly. So... They're definitely aggressive growers. So it's here. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing with them. I'm not sure where I'm putting them. Um, all right, up here, down at the bottom. I'm going to be very careful because this is how I break my Nepenthes. This is my Nepenthes truncata. This is just one of the two clones that I have. You can see it here growing a new uh, pitcher. I think the la latest one was this one. This is a super slow grower. Oh, it also needs help. <laughs> see how it's unfurling it right there. Um, this plant is such a slow grower and I love it because a lot of Nepenthes get very viney, very fast. Um, once they get going, it does not look cute. And many of those upper pitchers in like the Highlanders are really cool. The Lowlanders are not that cool, um, when they get to like uppers, in my opinion. Um, so this one right now is just slowly growing. I've had it for like two years and look how tidy and small it is. I really like this plant. It's one of my favorite species of Nepenthes. This is my Nepenthes Albor marginata. Um, what's cool about these is these ones are basically, they eat termites. Um, so they have this kind of woody color. I'm going to put it, I don't, I don't even know why I put it against you guys on the screen when I'm just going to put a close up. Um, what they do is basically they eat through that wood like sort of substance and then they fall in, which I think is like really fun. Um, this also, to me, a very slow grower. I'm not sure what is the conditions. Everything here looks fine, to be honest. Um, I don't know. It has just been a really slow grower. And it grows like the tiniest of pictures. You can see it there. 
I don't have a lot to say about it except that the leaves turn like a really pretty red when you sun stress it. That's about it. Um, all right, this one is big. This is my favorite Nepenthes, and honestly, my saddest looking one is Nepenthes bicalcarata. It's the one that has the fangs on it. It's also a lowlander. It tends to get really big leaves for the size of the pitcher. It does not like the transition that we did. I transitioned it into um, sphagnum and just perlite, and I topped it off with some leca. And I don't water it too often. It, like It just keeps a little bit of water in there. Um, I see some roots coming out of the bottom, which is nice. Um, but yeah, it just lost all of its pictures. It is growing a new one very slowly. Um, I just hope this plant doesn't die because I love it. It's one of those plants that even though it dies, I'm just going to buy another one because I really enjoy just having it. So the last one I am not going to pull out because it's just too big. You're just going to have to look at the video. Um, this Nepenthes is a hybrid between Nepenthes truncata that you saw earlier and Nepenthes alata. And it's one of my favorites. I love the size that it gets. It's one of the bigger ones that I've had um, that still maintains sort of like the flareness. It doesn't really fold over like many others, kind of like it just goes back. This one stays flare, and I love that. And then these pictures, I really hope they last as long as before. But when they were outside, they would last for like six months. And I just thought that was like so much fun. So yeah, so this is, it just grew two um, new ones from not having any. So I'm thinking that it's enjoying or, oh shit, this one did not look good. I think it is enjoying just being in this cabinet. Ugh, sticky. It's actually sweet. <laughs> that Nepenthes are full of extra uh, floral nectaries. E, F, N. Um, what that means is it just produces like a sticky, sweet substance um, trying to attract bugs. And I'm going to be honest, it's not too bad. I'm going to put a close-up of how it looks and then just touching it. Like it's really viscous, almost like a honey. And it tastes sweet. So I guess maybe I'm like part bug. Um, yeah. So there you go. That was my plant cabinet. So let's check out the other ones. All right. Over here, I have my other stand. It used to be by the window, but I moved it because I could not get enough plants to like get light. Um, right now, it's holding some of my alocasias in their big container and some of the plants that I don't love. Uh, um, so my first one is going to be that alocasia mellow that we rescued um, last fall. It did put out a new leaf. Um, it lost one of the big ones. And honestly, this plant has just multiplied like stupid. Um, I'll show you at the end all my other prop allocations. And I literally have, from this plant that I paid $10 for, I have, I believe, like eight like plants that just came out of the corms. And I'm like, damn. So allocation mellow has just been good for me. And it's fun. And, you know, I love the texture that it has. Like, it, it's, it's a great plant. Up next is just my allocation. Green dragon, dragon scale. Mm, I transplanted this or repotted it into Leca. I want to say like a month ago. It still has not grown um, any new roots. Still has not looks like it's not pushing a new leaf. It just this is the last one that it like had, basically. Um, we just think it's beautiful, and then look the one that I had before. So I hope it does okay. I do. I did see a bunch of developing corms at the base of this plant when I repotted it in here. So I'm, I'm assuming that maybe if it did not like the repot, it's about to start sending out a bunch of, of babies. Then this one is my silver dragon. Now let's do a quick inspection of the leaves. As we're getting closer to that alocasia purply, I'm inspecting everything for spider mites. And if I see anything, I'm putting some of that Captain Jack's, which I think is incredible for, it, it got rid of my spider mite infestation and also when I had thrips. So I love it. I don't use it as a preventative um, because I believe some parasites or plants can just get resistant, like the, the bugs. So I'm not trying to get like a, like a spinosaur resistant, I don't know, thrip or something. Um, so I don't use it too much, but whenever I see anything in it, I make sure to apply it. This is my allocation nebula, which I have found to be very difficult. It's actually 
I would say the most difficult um, alocasia that I have right now. It does have really nice roots growing through it. It is like in Lekka, basically. But I just cannot get it to be happy. I mean, it keeps creating, like every time it's put a new leaf, as you can see there, every time it puts a new leaf, it gets this sort of like edge burn. At first, I thought it was cold damage from when it was close to the window, so I moved it here. But now I'm not too sure. So if you know what causes that, like, help me out. I'm, I'm pretty lost with this plant. Um, it's putting out a new leaf, but it's tiny. Uh, it has nutrient solution. It has everything. So, yeah. I don't know if nebula is just, like, difficult or this plant did not enjoy the rehab that we've been working on. Up next is one of the Billy ATAs that grew from a tissue culture i basically purchased one of those like oh reverted pack five of them i knew it was not it had zero chance of it being um actually variegated surprisingly because billy ata is not doing great in tissue culture as variegated they just revert like out of a huge batch so many are not good quality so basically i knew it was not going to happen but i still bought it because i wanted the plant and what i learned is that this is one aggressive plant it just grows so fast. This plant grows so fast, it starts pushing out. It went from like a tiny little thing to this monster, like in three months. And then now it has also a little one on the side. And let me show you like the others that I have here. I transitioned a few into Lekka. Um, and then you can see how aggressive the root system is. I mean, look how big. Like I'm fussy. Yeah, so I'm not sure if this is the plant that I'm going to keep. I'm honestly keep trying to swap them because I think they're going to get too big too fast. And I'm just going to be in trouble if I do not um, get rid of them. So I do want a, a variegated one. If you saw my wish list, you know I want a variegated of these. Um, because it grows really easy and it's really fun and it's a pretty plant. I just don't need four of them <laughs> hanging around and growing. All right, so next up is my philodendron white night with an upside bottle from a few days ago um it's so moist i think I've, I've talked about this plant maybe on my instagram um i don't like this plant are we allowed to say that um i just don't i just don't like the way that the stem is really hard like it hardens in whatever position it is and it's not easy to bend back so I literally have not been able to attach this plant this entire time, even though I trust pushing it and doing stuff without it like kind of getting damaged. So yeah, this was one of those plants that I got as a swap, so I'm not really like too mad. But the first leaf that it gave me after the swap was this half moon. And I was really excited because I was like, maybe I hit the jackpot and I got one of those like high variegation for nothing. And then it's like the next leaves are just like trash, like nothing nothing this one has like a tiny little there um then it put out another half moon but that did not come out correctly because it's like diff i don't know this plant just sucks um and then this one look it's fully green and then this one which is the latest one um it does have some white on the edge this is my stromanthi three star and if you saw my house um, video so like my walkthrough when I was moving out you saw that I had this huge huge plant of like was really big um, I just chose basically the one that I like the most and I just pulled it out and I put it in Lekka and just recently has pushed out this new baby right here I think it has such a pretty variegation it's really high but it still has enough green to survive um, I later will show you the other ones outside they are not they're not looking as sharp and then right here I have my Nepenthes Miranda this is one of those plants that I just recommend anyone to buy. If you like, if you're interested in carnivorous plants, I recommend you buy a Nepenthes Miranda. This is basically a really, really rewarding plant. This is a baby of the baby of the baby, but it, it just grows these massive pitchers and they're, they last so long and it's just a really fun plant. It will get viney and it does start to get long, but I think it's beautiful and, um, yeah, it's one of those also Nepenthes that I'm like, I will always have because they're so rewarding. We're back on the floor. Up next, we have my begonia. Um, I think it's called like Pink Spot or something like that. It gets this really, really, really pinkness like this leaf and it maintains it when it's close 
to the light. Um, you see how it's like really pinky. And then when it does not have a lot of light, it just gets more green colored. Um, I moved it from under a grow light to just right next to like in between grow lights because this plant just gets really tall. Um, so I'm just trying to not have it get too big too fast or else I'm going to have to be taking cuttings. This plant is actually getting a little too big for what I wanted. So I think I'm going to take a few cuttings of this side right here with some clean scissors. Um, just because I don't need it to get like any more big. I just want it to get bushy, get low. Um, you see out here, it's pushing a bunch of new growth at the bottom of the pot. So I'm just going to sort of like top it off um, and see what happens underneath. Here's where I keep some of my props, whether it's like an alocasia or any kind of node or anything like that. I like to keep it in like a Tupperware kind of contained. So let's see what how they're doing. I'm going to, of course, be playing the video right there. Oh, I think it's doing really well. So this is a, I believe, a Syngonium Mojito, something like that. I bought it as a three node pack for like 15 bucks. It only came with two and the other one did not take. Um, so it is what it is. And then here you have, I think this is a Dragon Scale. No idea what that is. Um, also no idea what that is. I just stick around some like random um alocasia corms that i find sometimes and i just like throw them there and i it's kind of like a mystery corm until i <laughs> make it big enough all right so first we're going to start with this side which is basically my columnar i really love this tube i don't really know what they're called like shelves it works with tension so basically you need to push a spring upward and then that's what's holding it and then i attach a zip tie to like the wall just in case it falls over so I'm going to basically just take down some plants and then walk you through it. This one right here is my, I think is my Pothos Mandula. I lost the tag and I have not been able, but I believe it's a Mandula. I transitioned it into Leca and it's doing pretty well so far. And um, this most bowl is dry. So I'm hoping that it starts to root in there. I really want to get those big like leaves, but so far, it's not really sizing up, um, but, you know, I do have some hope. I'm going to try to air layer it a little bit to, like, make the roots go into the pole. So basically, just try to push them in so they grow inside. And I'm just going to hope that that kind of helps. All right, so we're going to put a water bottle, and then that should be fairly simple. All right, up next, right here, is my Philodendron Mickens Tower. It's doing okay. It has kind of... Hit a bit of a rough um, spot once they reach the top. Not really sure what I'm doing with them. Um, I'm most likely just going to cut it, prop it, and then put it at the bottom and then try to get it to be like old bushy, kind of like where you see those most poles. Um, yeah, I don't find this to be the easiest task, but I've only been doing it for a few months. I really want to get this to be like covered in it. Um, yeah, so far it's been fun. This is a really fun plant to own. Um, I really recommend it. It's not going to get too big, so you're not going to end up with like massive leaves, kind of like Melanochrysum, but it's still you still get like the full experience and like you can make it hang. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So ideally, my dream is sort of like I want this pole to be covered in like mickens and then to also allow it to like drape down. So you have this entire really fun um, like mickens tower, but you know, we're working on it. Now over here, I have my other um, Nepenthes truncata. This is the bigger one that just creates like a lot bigger pictures. So you can see compared to the other one, how big they are. And they do last a long time. Um, something that I have been sort of struggling with, and if anyone out there has some tips, I would love that, is that while the entire picture lasts a really long time, like the actual top of it just kind of burns. So you see like it burns, and then like this one is fine. The other one burns. Um, it, I know it keeps sort of collecting um everything inside it and still digesting it and being able to take up the nutrients so that's when I, I don't cut them off or anything but i'm just curious to know what is causing that on those and then eventually this one's um the peristome around the which is like the little the little lip around it um it turns really 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 dark brown and the other one stays kind of red um so yeah i'm not really sure why but it is a fun plant to own very slow grower like very slow grower um like i've had this plant for literally two years and you see 
how big it is. It is not. You need like a good five to ten years to get those massive pitchers that can like trap um, birds and shit like that for Nepenthes. Yeah. The hybrids are much quicker. Like they, they size up a lot quicker, which is why you have so many hybrids of Truncata. But I digress. This is my philodendron red emerald. If you saw my um, strawberry shake video, you saw how little, or not little, but it was like climbing up. And then this is basically like the update. It is getting a lot bigger than I hoped it would. It's really just sizing up. I moved it somewhere where it was getting a little bit less um, light. So I was hoping to slow down kind of like its process, but I'm not succeeding. <laughs> I think it's just like it's doing okay because it has new leaf. It's just starting to um, just get bigger. So I kind of don't want to give it an extension because I, I think it's going to get too, too big. But I might have to because it's, it's a, such a nice plant. I don't want to chop it. I don't want to prop it. I don't want to throw it away. Um, so I'm thinking I'm just going to add another one and then see what happens. So up next is my philodendron El Choco Red. This is a plant that it was sort of like in a wish list, you know, in 2021. And I was like, I would love to have it. And I was finally able to get it for like 15 bucks um, when it was like a lot smaller. I find it to grow really tight together with like all of the leaves. Like there's, they just overlap. And sometimes I feel like it's sort of like killing itself, but it seems to be doing okay. And then you see like the internodal space um, in this plant is really not wide, at least not, not yet. So it's been like a slow grower. It's only like halfway through the moss pole. Um, and yet it's getting leaves this size. So I'm just really excited to see like where it goes. This is one of my favorite philodendrons. This is philodendron black cardinal, not variegated. This is one of those plants that I purchased, I want to say for like 30 something dollars in 2020. So it's been like three ish years and it has been so much fun to grow. I feel like we've gone through so much together. Um, we lived in a, in a house, it was indoors without light, then I threw it outside and then it had a huge infestation of spider mites that we fought for a while. But I think it's a lot of fun because it's really a self-heading philodendron and it doesn't get really big. So while the leaves are fun and they last a long time, like it's maybe, I don't know, like eight inches it has grown in like almost four years. So it has really, really, really tight internal space then look how pretty the leaves are. It just, I mean, if you would quest, like quiz me, I think the last leaf that we have is probably like two and a half years old. Um, so it's a slow grower. The only issue I have with this plant is that sometimes half of the bottom leaf just gets strapped and it rips out. So you see it here, you see it again here, like it just rips. The rest of the leaf is fine. It's just that one part. Not really sure what causes it. I try to help out the leaf as it's coming out, um, but I just love it. I love the how dark the leaves are. I love how long it takes for them to turn green. And yeah, this is such a rewarding plant. If you're interested in one of those self-heading philodendrons that don't get or grow too, too fast, I think dark cardinal is definitely one of my favorites. So right here, we have another one of those philodendron biliette that I was mentioning earlier. And still, look how aggressive this root system is. Like. That is so rude. Um, it's for swap if anyone wants it. I think it's too big and I think it's getting too big for, for me. Again, I have four left. I need to get rid of them. Um, this is, I really don't remember the name of this plant. It's like a velvet, um, purple velvet plant. It's so much fun. I, I, grew, I got this plant from Home Depot for like $4.99. One of those plants that are like cheap, but it's so much fun. It gets super purple. It gets really fussy. Just be careful that it doesn't get spider mites. Um, but it does vine. It does get long and starts to elongate. So what I do is I just cut it and then it just gets bushier. So when you see it starting to get like a little too long, just chop it and then it just creates the most beautiful of patterns and the most beautiful colors. It is right next to the purpley that had this spider mite. So we're going to like super inspect it just in case. Uh, next is the problem child. This is the alocasia purpley. I, I actually made a video, but I never posted it. So I'll post it here. Um, of me apologizing to this plant because I talked so much shit about how it was basically a scam. And it turns out that it's not a scam. It's just that I did not give it enough light when it's coming out. So what you need to do is basically you need to blast the new leaves with a lot, like a lot of light without it burning. And then it gets really purple and it lasts a long time. It's still sitting um, fully in Leca. 
do it. And um, yeah, so far it seems to be doing okay. It has a new leaf coming out right here, I believe. You can see it has a new leaf coming out right here. Um, and then it's also pushing a, let's see if we can get it to focus. It's pushing a little corn down into the soil. <sighs> and then it also has a grow point right here. So I'm not really sure what this plant wants. Um, I'm like, put out a new leaf, grow a new growth point, or give me a corn. I don't care, but do something except get spider mites. Um, so I'm going to look really close because you had spider mites, and I sprayed it with that um, spinosad. And usually that is so good that in one or two applications, it's like gone. Uh-oh. Oh, I just moved it. I just, ooh, shut up. You know, whenever you like touch a little um, speck and you move it and it just becomes like bloody, I'm like, ooh, I know that. So we're going to treat this. with Spinosaut. Spray. Ugh. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray this with Spinosaut and then capture the drip and then rub it. So this is a bacteria that, <clears throat> I'm honestly not sure what it does. I don't know if it's, it disturbs something, if it infects them. But it tends to be like that. And it's also mixed in with some soap. So what I do is we put it, I hold it in the back, and then we just kind of wipe it. Wipe, wipe, wipe. I don't know why these spider mites are just drawn to this plant. I'm like, why? So I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to put a little bit more of that. Do it. And then I'm going to wipe it. Wipe, wipe, wipe. I'm going to leave a little bit there. So it soaks in and anything that it touches is there. I don't think it works really well as like a, as a preventative because it needs to, I think, be in contact with whatever it is that you're trying to um, kill. But doesn't. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray the base with it. That way we get like all of that bacteria all over the leca and all over the plant and hopefully get rid of some of those spider mites forever. This is my alocasia stingray, also known for being a spider mite magnet. So I'm going to inspect it very closely. It is not that close to the purpley, but I still don't trust this plant. This plant was just hunted. Well, not this plant, the parent of this plant, where I got this corn from, I traded. That plant would get spider mites all the time. Being outside, it was just infested. No, so far I haven't seen any. This plant I think is growing really well indoors. It's right next to the light. That's why all the leaves are sort of like facing the light. It did lose two leaves while I was away. So we'll just have to cut that. All right, and then we're going to check the roots. You're like, why are you holding it? And he's like, because I know it's full of roots. So you see, it's telling me that it should be repotted into a bigger pot. I'm telling it. No, you're good. I don't need you getting big. I do not need this plant to get like full adult size. Too big. Too, too, too big. This is my Philodendron Splendid. You saw the other two babies that I had. Basically, when this came to me, it broke. Um, and the base grew those two babies. And then the rest of it, I just kind of rooted onto a moss pole. And it worked out really well. So some of these leaves have sized up noticeably lately. You see how big it is getting um this plant's a lot of fun i i think it's definitely easier than varicosum which is what you know it's a little difficult look at the leaf it needs me it needs me it's half committing so let's do it together because i want to trigger you where am i oh here all right so let's do it together i'm gonna spray the huge i'm like all right now we're just gonna very carefully peel it Mm. <laughs> feel so happy i love doing that shit i know i'm not supposed to and then i'm out here bending the leaf and you're like stop it pablo don't do that and i'm telling you i'm just looking for spider mites just in case they're in the new leaf and they're gonna mess it up i need to be on it all right i don't see anything bad but behind this one, there was something sus, so I'm going to spray it with one, a little bit of the spinosad. This is my Paraiso Verde, one of another plant that I do not like. I thought it was going to be pretty because I live here in South Florida, and I thought it was going to 
get that really beautiful lime green color, which it gets for like five minutes when the leaf unfurls and then the entire thing proceeds to turn dark green because it's too cold in here. <laughs> it's like 75 to 80 degrees like constantly and that is too cold for this plant. It needs to be warmer than that in order for it to get that color. I actually ended up attaching underneath, you can see a little baby, I ended up attaching a you can see a little baby. I ended up attaching a... Oh, shit. Oops. <laughs> I think I think the fan just took down the growth point. <laughs> oh, no. Oopsies. Well, it took down the whole leaf. Um, mental note, don't push the plant up into the fan. All right, well, it's all right. The new growth point is still kicking. The new growth point is still working. So all that got jacked up was the new leaf. We're going to cut it, and that's it. Not, whatever. Plants are pretty resilient, so I'm not worried about that. My bad. Um, that's what I get for trying to uh, give you the close-up directly instead of just the camera. Um, this pole is super, super dry because this plant is way too big. It's just getting too, too big for its container. I'm going to make a video about it. Um, ooh. I'm going to make a video about it, and hopefully I like this plant a little bit more after the video. All right, so right here is my Calithia um, White Fusion Stella, I think is the name. I did a whole video um, where I compare growing this plant to chat GPT um, is the last video that I put out. This is the one that was mine and the other one from chat GPT is outdoors. I'm not gonna lift it because it's a whole hassle, but this plant right here is I think the dark form Gloriosum. This is like the first plant I ever bought as a rare plant, but I just wanted it to, I wanted it to stay with me. I know, I, I should have put it outside. It has not liked the transition indoors, but I just want this plant, um, I just enjoy having Gloriosum. So I'm still trying to make it the most of it. It just has one leaf that is pretty um, green now, so I'm not doing too well. And it has a little growth point here. I'll put a video on it. Um, yeah, my Gloriosum is definitely on the struggle bus, but if I get a new one, I'm gonna try for it to be variegated because I love this plant and it's such a fun grower. Um, this one just got transitioned from three years being outdoors into inside and into Leca, and that was a little bit much for it. Right here, next, we have my Alocasia cupria red secret, um, even though I think it's the exact same thing as the other one. So you can see it does get reddish. Um, I had to move it basically there because all of the leaves began to do this, which is they're trying to get away from the light. They're kind of like pushing out. You see how they're all kind of like what? So what that's telling me is that this plant is getting too much, or was getting too much light. So I moved it into this new spot. It put out a new leaf. And I'm just going to be observing what this new leaf uh, does. So if the new leaf decides to like also do the same, then it's also getting too much light there. And we'll have to find a new spot for it. I think out of all the alocasias that I'm growing, you've seen my, my growing all the alocasia, the jewel alocasia videos. This one is probably the most dark, like less light that it needs. I keep moving it because it keeps not liking too much light. Even though it's a really, really fast grower and I, I just transition into Leca. Um, yeah, it has, it is difficult to get a spot that it likes because it doesn't like too much. Oh my God. It's even so difficult to put back into the container because all the leaves are folding in inside into the, the basket. Ugh. You need to like push each one separately. Yeah. So yeah, um, red secret is beautiful. I love it. Let's inspect for some spider mites. No spider mites. This plant is fantastic and I hope you have it and I really, really hope I get it in pink. You know that uh, variegation with pink, it's so beautiful. I pull some pictures about it. Um, yeah, this plant is great, but I think it could be greater. Up next is my Philodendron Glorious, which is a hybrid of Gloriosum, which is right next to it, and Melanochrysum, which is next. Um, and this plant has just been so much fun. It's getting huge. It's, it's a climber. Wait, hold up. Let's learn from my mistakes. I'm not going to kill it. 
because I would uh, this plan would hurt me if I break the growth point. The Paraiso Verde, I kind of don't care. Um, so I've had this plant from baby. Let's not kill it. It's growing some nice plants here. You see, it has. I think it had up to up until this leaf when I got it. All of the other leaves it has put out under my care, getting bigger, getting bigger, about to reach the top of its moss pole. Um, so yeah, Philodendron Glorious is a great plant. If you don't have it or if you're interested in one of those heart leaf that grows really fast, I think Glorious should be the top of your list. And like I was saying, up next is my Philodendron um, Melanochrysum. Here you can see it's big. It pushes out a lot of new leaves. It's actually, where's the missing spot? There's a missing spot right here that I lost because I was trying to help the leaf out and I ended up just snapping it off. But it just kept going and did not miss a beat. Something that I'm finding about this melanocrysum in particular is that it overlaps with the leaves a lot. So I don't know if that's what they just do or anything. It has a new leaf coming out that it needs a little bit of help. Huh, that was easy. All right, so I just helped it. Um, Yeah, surprisingly enough, I think it, this moss pole actually is holding up, which is telling me that it doesn't have too many roots into the moss pole, unlike the Paraiso Verde that is basically just drying that almost like in less than a week. So I'm really excited about this plant. I want to get it to see it get big. Um, I will probably give it maybe allow it to get up to like here, this level, and then I'll do like a chop and extend. It'll be like my first chop and extend with this Melanochrysum. So I'm really excited and looking forward to that. Then this is a vertical um, tower that is like on the other side. So in here, I have really close to this huge, really strong light is my uh, Philodendro Birkin. One of those basic plants that I had, I bought really cheap. I didn't care for it. It reverted. And then I just cut and I threw in like some Leca and this is what grew from it. So it has actually managed to like win its way back into my heart. By creating some like fun sort of like half moon and then it's like another one here and then everything else has a really cool variegation and because i'm putting it so close to the light it's creating a really tight sort of like bouquet kind of look which i'm really like super enjoying the way this is going this is my begonia maculata um I need to repot it into a bigger container. Like I'm still waiting for the day in which this is gonna get too dry and the entire thing is just gonna fall over. But it has grown so many roots. Look at this. So many roots. Um, so I need to transplant this and get it a little bit bushier because you know it's just gonna become like a cane. But so far I'm really liking its look. I think it's sort of like just working its way down, getting longer. Yeah, hopefully I get to repot it into a bigger container before it tips over <laughs> and dies then this one oh you should be familiar with because i made an entire video about it this is my um strawberry shake which is beautiful it has not lost any leaves it put out one new leaf here it's putting out a new one and i ch changed it into um leka and you can see that it's so aggressive. Look at all those roots. So, so aggressive. Um, I also started like air, air layering it so I could help it sort of get up. And then you're gonna see the video of all the roots just going completely haywire. Um, I'm really, I have high hopes for this plant once I have it going up the moss pole. Um, I think it's gonna be very pretty. I think it's gonna do Hopefully, very nice variegations. So yeah, so this is my strawberry shake. Still great, now with a muscle. Up next is my Philodendron Florida Ghost, which I love. This is actually exactly like the plant that I wanted. It just doesn't turn too green. Like, it stays, like this plant, this leaf is like the third old. And you see how like minty it kind of, not even minty, it's like still white. It just has some stripes. This is the other one, completely white. This is the latest one, still completely white. Now it's about to push a fourth one completely white. And then even the other ones that are have turned green, turn green into this sort of like very half committed green. It's very, very um, pale. Do you see that? Yeah, that's the mess that I got. And yeah, I love this plant. I love the color of the stem and the petiole. This, this orange is just amazing. Um, 
Does it look like this plant needs help? Yes, it does look like that. Hold up, where's my, my spray bottle? Let me let me torture you. Where's my spray bottle? All right, let's do it again. Um, I'm gonna spray it. This is the hydrogen peroxide and water. And then... We're doing it. I'm triggering everyone and it's amazing. I'm sorry. I love doing this with my plants. Like, I love doing that. And then getting it out. And then I'm not going to try too hard because I know the growth point is like right there. So I'm not going to mess with this. It'll dry out. But at least I know I got all the leaf out and now it can unfurl and it will not have any issues. And then I'll get a final spray just for luck. Up next is my philodendron um, painted lady. I don't care for this plant. It It's gets busy it gets really bushy there's two plants here um like it even has a stuck leaf you see it like it's stuck let's help it um i don't particularly care much for for this plant i think it i don't know i don't care much for yellow variegation so that i don't care much for yellow variegation so i think that makes this plant not be like my fave Ever. There we go. But we got this little thing out. Let me just make sure that it actually unfurls the whole way. All right. And then this one is still too tight. So, yeah, Philodendron Painted Lady. It's all right. This is my Philodendron Brazil, and it's a little too big. Um, I need to chop it. I'm also trying to create like a tower, but it really lost its variegation, but it got really nice big leaves. So I need to chop this right here, and I think I'm going to try to water propagate it and then put it at the bottom. Up next is my philodendron um, hastatum, has, has has yeah, silver sword. And basically, this is also a plant that I got from a swap. Um, it was very small when I got it. I think it had only this leaf, and it has sized up fairly well. Um, nothing major. I've seen it variegated. I don't think it's that cute. So I'm not interested in having this plant variegated. But um, I th I'm really excited for it to begin to get, you know, those sword-shaped um, leaves. I think it's sizing up very well. It's liking the moss ball. And once it gets maybe like two more leaves-ish, I'm going to add an extension and then attach it because um, I just want it to get big and feel like secure. So yeah, this is a fun plant. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. This is my philodendron mame rojo. Um, I got it from Plant Fairy, uh, say like an add-on for like 15 bucks. It was pretty great. I think I got it with like this leaf right here and everything else has grown in my care. Um, I think it's great. It grew a lot of roots. I mean, look at this, hold up. <laughs> look at that. It grew all of these roots um, really, really fast. So all I need to make sure is that the bottom container has enough water and then the plant is okay but it, it is not creating a lot of roots to attach itself up here you see that like it doesn't have roots so i think i'm gonna try to potentially air layer it and then see if that helps make it a little more stable up next is my philodendron um burl marks variegated <laughs> talk about a mess of a, a variegation it is so unstable it just does whatever it wants it creates a bunch of like random grow points you can see them there some are like 100% variegated, some are completely green, some you get lucky and you get this beautiful like half and like, you know, half and half kind of um, half moon. And then sometimes you get like the cool three boards or mostly variegated. But I am chopping this plant all the time because it gets too many green growths. So it's okay. It was also a trade. I didn't pay anything for it. So I'm enjoying just growing it. But I don't know if I would recommend this plant to anyone because it's just really... It's just not really inconsistent. So I'm hoping that it just climbs this moss ball and then it becomes really bushy and then hopefully I can change my mind. Alocasias. These are the same alocasias from my Jewel Alocasia All video. Um, if you have not seen that, here's um, a letter for that. But basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to grow all of the different Jewel Alocasias and then a bunch of extra ones and then just see which one I like the most and then trying to get the one that I like the most as a variegated version. So I've gotten some new ones from that video and then some others have just like multiplied and grown. Um, the first one, this one is the Alocasia Maharani. I think it's doing really well. Um, I'm putting the video 
right here. Um, so I think it's doing really well. This last leaf is looking sharp, a lot of colors. The other one also survived and currently is pushing a third. Um, I've had some issues trying to keep a lot of leaves on this. So when it pushes one out, it kills the other one. So I'm hoping that if I increase a little bit of the nutrients that I'm giving it, maybe it'll hold more leaves. I'm still sort of like experimenting on it. Um, I'm not sure if more light is what it's going to need because like my Cupria did not like having more light. This is one of those new ones that I was talking about. This is an Alocasia Zabrina. You see how it, it's also growing a bunch of nice little roots. Um, this one needs a little bit of water, to be honest. So this is one of those plants that I got um, from Etsy. It was supposed to be a Sabrina reticulata, which are the cool ones that have all the like the veining and stuff like that. But like I said, Etsy scammed me, um, or they just sent me a bunch of plants that were not what they had listed. So whatever you call that. That's what they did to me. Um, up next, this one is the Quilted Dreams. This one, I think it's telling me that it's ready for a repot, but I'm not really sure if I wanna be moving all of these plants too quickly, because um, I don't want them to size up too fast. So I know Quilted Dreams can get kind of big. Right now it has two leaves that are really tight and it's pushing another right here. Um, and then it has this cute little corn sort of like sticking up. Um, so yeah, I think this will get a repot, but I'm not too sure when. I'm just going to keep putting nutrients on it and hope that it doesn't hate being a little root bound. Um, and it'll, it'll probably just keep pushing like horns. This one is one of the ones that like really surprised me out of like all the ones that I have. I was not expecting to have this type of color. This is the Alocasia Infernalis Capit. Um, it's really dark, which is really cool, but something that I liked a lot, and again, it could be absolutely nothing, but there's this tiny speckle of like sport variegation on it, and I'm like, I think it's really cute. So who knows, maybe the next leaf will also have one of those, and you never know, but I'm excited. This leaf is incredible. It's completely pitch black, but when you put it under the light, it has this like reddish iridescence. And makes it like so cool so i really hope that this plant gets big and like a bunch of leaves because i just think this is just a very interesting plant that i didn't think i would like as much as i am enjoying it it's my alocasia purple cloak um it's starting to get like the purple cloak look and it's pushing a third leaf this is another one that it, it just kills the leaf the moment it gets a new one um if you have any advice do you think it needs more light i'm, I'm thinking it needs more nutrients and not all of them are sort of behaving the same way. So I'm beginning to see a lot of the kind of different new ones and the differences between alocasia species, which is really cool. This one is one that I think is doing really well. This is the alocasia blue dragon. Um, it has this really weird sheen to it. I guess you could call it bluish. To me, it feels more gray. Um, I still have no idea what kind of hybrid this is. Like I've asked a bunch of different sellers that sell this plant. I asked the person that I bought it from and no one can give me a correct, like, or a final definitive answer. So I'm still hunting for that. If you know it, let me know. I believe, and you know, quote me on this, this is just by experience of me growing it, that it has to have kind of like a nebula parent because it has the same kind of coloring on the, um, on the stems or I guess petioles. And then it also has the very similar sort of shape and darkness of the veinage. So to me, I kind of believe that this could be um, that. You can see sort of like the comparison between the nebula um, imperialis. You see kind of like the shape and then you see like the stem. And then this one has a very similar leaf shape. Um, so the really cool, this nebula has been so much easier than the other one that was supposed to be a rescue. The rescue one is difficult. This one has been pretty good. It's pushing out a lot of new leaves. Um, it's created a couple corms that I can see their little babies. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe the other one was just not in the greatest of conditions when I got it. So I'm just having better luck with this plug, which was just, you know, a plug that had to be 
transplant it. But yeah, I think this one is doing pretty well. Up next is my Alocasia Platinum. This is a very interesting plant. It grew a lot at the beginning, and then it sort of like stagnated. Now it's killing two of its leaves, and it put out a bunch of roots. Um, so I'm not sure if it just was like, I'm done, I'm, I'm too root bound, or I just need more nutrients, but it doesn't seem as root bound as some of the other ones. And it is pushing a new leaf at the moment. So like I said, I'm just gonna have to increase the nutrients a little bit, because I'm not seeing like leaf tip burn or anything like that. Um, and see it makes it like increase because i love this leaf this platinum this bisma um just beautiful like this is one of my favorite leaf shape and colors i just wish wish it would be a little bigger or a little more um faster grower up next is my alocasia and toro velvet this plant i think was growing really really well at the beginning and it has hit a few um issues lately i'm not sure why i think it might have gotten like root bound or might need more nutrients but it stopped sizing up it's been killing some of its leaves and then it decided to push um, a bunch of corms that i see them like moving around and shifting so i'm not sure if that's just what they do if it just needs to be repotted in a bigger container or more nutrients but it just completely changed its growth pattern like out of the blue um so yeah if you know anything about it let me know this is my alocasia uh, morocco pink dragon and honestly it's one of the saddest things ever it has it has just held on to this leaf literally for like five months it has not done absolutely anything it just hates me it notes that i hate it it notes that i don't, I don't get along with, along with pink dragons and it's just living up to its like reputation i just don't know why pink dragons are so difficult for me um i just cannot keep any happy and yeah so this is a pink dragon and it's sad and it's probably going to die, but I don't know what's going on. This one is my Alocasia Heterophylla Dragon's Breath. Um, you can see how beautiful it gets some of its like leaves. I've seen some really cool ones on Instagram. I always make sure to comment like, I am obsessed with your Heterophylla because I am. I think this is such a cool plant um, and I just hope mine gets anywhere near that. It is finally putting out a second leaf that is pretty big. Um, we're going to try to help it out. Because it's sort of like stuck up sometimes in the sheet. Like you don't need to be too harsh with it. Like you can be like super gentle like that. And just leave it like bent so it doesn't go back to the spot. This is my Odora variegated, um, which is not doing great. It had one leaf that was really, really good. I mean, look at that. How cool is that leaf? But then the next one that just came out is um, not variegated at all like at all so i guess it reverted or it will revert if the next one doesn't have anything um yeah so 50 50 i need to chop this plant this is one of the reasons i don't love variegated alocasias that are like unstable because all of them are unstable um yeah i feel like you can spend a lot of money this was a, a swap so i did not spend a lot of money but i feel like you can spend a lot of money and then just it reverts and then you're just looking like dumb dumb this is my heterophylla corazon is the one that i think has had the biggest sort of like leaf jump ever since that video it's one here one here and it's pushing out a new leaf i think what happened with this is that it's slightly kind of like root bound um you can see how much the roots are and then it has a couple corms you see one there you see another one here that i like square machine so I think I'm gonna pop off those two corms. I think I'm going to put them in the prop box and then see if we can get it to, um, for them to sprout and come out before the next swap. So I can swap them. That'd be really cool. This one is just an Alocasia um, Reginula Black Velvet. Um, I have a bunch of these because they just multiply really fast. So I don't wanna repot them into like a bigger container because I don't want them to get too big. So I'm pretty happy with the size of most of them. This one is, of course, a Alocasia Maharani. And this one is also like, look at this. This is like offensive. I, people are going to be cussing at me when you see this. Like that's all roots. That's literally all roots. Um, they have taken the shape of this. And you see all of the corms that it's like trying so hard to push out. <laughs> 
But um, yeah, I don't want to, again, I don't want to repot them because they get really big. So I'm just trying to um, find a medium between the ones that don't grow too fast and the ones that are just like super, super fast growers. And then from the bottom tier, I'm just going to pull out some of the plants that are basically different because a lot of them are just repeated. Those are the ones that I'm going to use for my swap. So right now I have a few that are alocasia poly um, to not be confused with the purpley. Um, these are just other ones that I used to have and then I just put into Leca, and now I have a bunch of little babies all around. A bunch of others are simply just a bunch of little baby alocasia mellows that came from the original one that I rescued that had like eight corms in it. And then I just basically put them in a cup with um, perlite and then they sprouted and I just recently moved them into their own containers for a plant swap because I want to make sure they're established enough that I can just trade them for something else. And then the last plants in this office are going to be this Epipretinum, I think it's uh, Marble, Queen Marble, Marble Queen, something like that. Um, I don't really care much for these. I live in South Florida, so you have the golden um, Epipretinum, the poth pothos, um, just climbing everywhere. And this looks really similar to that. So I usually just have it in like a con big container. Um, and then when I moved, I just kind of like snapped this one branch and then it's just been growing like that for the past few months. I think it's doing okay. I mean, it's pretty, but again, yellow variegation is not my favorite, but I think it does the trick just to like, as a hanging plant, really easy. Just keep that full of water. And of course, is a Syndapsis silver, I believe. Um, I used to have an entire basket of these. You can see like, I don't know if I have any pictures, but it used to be massive. I just got it like small and it grew a lot outside of South Florida. But I'm gonna be honest, it never quite brought me as much joy as I hoped it would. Um, I like the silver in speckles. I just don't like how sometimes it gets really leggy and there's a big space in between like the leaves. Um, I don't know. I just, I just never loved it. I know lately you've had a lot of new Sangonium sort of like variegated versions. I've seen so many of them that are selling for like one leaf for hundreds of dollars. And I love that if you're into that and you're collecting those, I just don't, I just don't quite get it because I've had this one and I, I see other pictures and I just know that it's not the easiest plant to just get to size up and get luscious particularly of like one node that's going to be a long battle but it is pretty i do have this it's the only thing that remains i don't see myself purchasing any other synapses anytime soon but you know i'm going to keep this one and hopefully when it gets long enough i'm going to chop it and then just try to propagate it and then hopefully it gets bushier um but i'm not really sort of like holding my breath for this plant because it's okay and then last but certainly not least in this room is my um blue oil fern i think it's coil Microsorum thailandicum. I'm not sure what form this is. I believe this is just a um, like a long form or small. I know they come like wide and big and something. It has some spores in the back of it that I've been keeping an eye on for the past couple months. And I think I'm gonna put them in some moss and see what happens. I know they're super, super, super slow growers. And this one is. In a few months, it has only given me this one leaf. Um, I hear that they might need a lot more humidity and moisture. So I'm going to try to maybe keep some damp, moist um, sphagnum on top of the growth point. Maybe that'll help it out. I'm just worried that it will rot. But, you know, this plant seems to be a little, I don't want to say delicate, but it's definitely a very slow grower. So you might want to be careful with how many changes you give it. Because sometimes one change might just turn a bunch of leaves yellow and you're gonna have a difficult time sort of like bringing it back to life. But this fern is just um, beautiful. So there you have it, everyone. That was a walkthrough of my entire plant collection. I hope you enjoyed it. And then let me know down below which plant was your favorite, um, which ones do you have? And then what care advice do you have for any plants that you saw here that I, you know, I mentioned I was kind of like struggling a little bit with? Um, I would love to know sort of like some tips, some tricks. Don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to keep you updated on all of my plants and all the new ones that I just acquired.